start by contradiction because it now you actually have something concrete to work with. X equals P over Q. So what does that mean? Well, that means that P over Q squared equals 2. Right? With me? OK. We know how to work with fractions. We can assume all the arithmetic properties that we've talked about before. So this means, and another way to say that is hence, uh, what does this mean? What is P over Q squared? P squared over Q squared. And if I use cross multiplication, what do we get? P squared equals 2 Q squared. In mathematical writing, you have to know something about your reader, but we're assuming your reader knows how to work with integers and fractions. And so making the jump from here to here is probably OK. The reader can probably reproduce this argument, right? So you don't need to show all the steps if you assume your reader understands what you're doing. OK? OK, good. P squared equals 2Q squared. So what can I conclude about the number p? It's even because it is divisible by 2. Ah, then p uh, is even. And uh, I'll write, say it this way because this might be a better way of thinking about it. It's divisible by 2. Why is p even? There's a little bit of a jump here. Yes. Excellent question. The question was, are we going to say first that p squared is even? And uh, the answer actually depends on, a little bit on, uh, what, whether you think that's an important fact. Okay? Some of you made the jump here very quickly. But I, I claim it's, it's actually a, a little bit of a jump that you might want to help the reader with. Okay? So remind me your name. Maya. Maya is suggesting we should tell the reader that there's an intermediate step, and I agree with this. The first step is to notice that if something equals twice something else, it's that something that you're noticing is even. P squared is even, correct? Now, how do we make the jump from that to the fact that P is even? Yes? OK, yeah, so I mean, if you want, you could go all the way back to um, uh, unique factorization of integers into primes, et cetera. Uh, and uh, it's helpful to think about that if you really want to. But uh, another way to say it is uh, then p is even. And here's, here's, here's one way to justify it. You might say because if it were odd, if p were odd, p squared would be odd. Or another way to say it is, if p had a factor of 2, p squared would have a factor of 2. Right? Uh, sorry, if, sorry, if p squared had a factor of 2, OK, then p would have to have a factor of 2 as well. OK, then p is even. Good. Now, what does this mean? So I can write P as what? If it's even. It's twice something. I like M because uh, the letters M and N are often thought of as integers. But if P equals 2M, what does that imply? Hence, P squared equals 4M squared. And what does that imply? 4m squared equals what? 2 skew squared. Yes, question. Ooh, excellent, yes. Um, these are all good things. In fact, uh, you know, the, the process of doing a proof, you often re realize things that you need to add later. And so this is a, a good example of something to clarify your writing. In fact, this would not be a very good proof if we didn't say that. So thank you for pointing that out. So we should probably insert here 
where m for some m and z. For some m and z. Thank you. Hence, p squared equals 4m squared, and 4m squared equals 2q squared. OK, we're almost there. What does this mean? We, we feel like we're going somewhere, I, I think. If not, you're, you're, this is at least what you would do to play around with the problem to get a feeling for what's happening. But what, what does this mean? 4m squared equals 2q squared. But m, 2m squared equals q squared. OK, then this kind of looks like something we've seen before. What can we say about q? Ah, then q is, OK, now we maybe should tell the reader first that q squared is even, hence q is even. You've made this argument once. You probably don't have to make it again up there. OK? Hmm. Hmm. I feel like I'm going in circles. P is even. Q is even. I haven't reached a contradiction yet. What could I do? Make the assumption that you, you have no common factors, and then just say both even and have the common factors for the equal equation. Ah. Now, why would I want, how, how, first of all, why is that true? Can, why can I assume that P and Q have no common factors? Because what? OK, yeah, if they did have common factors, you know because of the equivalence of fractions that you could make it equivalent to one that didn't by canceling the common factors. So assume that P and Q are in, we say, lowest terms. This is the key ingredient we need. Uh, in other words, have no common factors, i.e., have no common factors. Here's where we're uh, really using the fact that uh, we can pick whatever representative we want. We might as well pick a good one. And then this would give us a contradiction. Uh, then uh, this contradicts. Um, the fact that P and Q uh, the are in lowest terms. OK, so what does this mean? This means that the assumption that X squared had a solution yielded a logical impossibility, a contradiction. Therefore, what? So, um, x squared equals 2 has, must, have, must have no solution in Q. OK. Now, uh, when you get more sophisticated, uh, you're going to assume the reader understands when you do a proof by contradiction, you're just trying to get a contradiction, and you're ending the proof there. But at least for the first few weeks of this course, you should probably remind the reader that you've reached the contradiction. Okay. Later on, you may, you may not need to write this as much, but try to do it at first just to get in the habit of thinking about the reader. The way we'll think about this course, by the way, is each time you're writing a proof, think, that, think about writing the proof for a person who is two weeks behind you in this course. Okay? So there are things they don't know that you know, and you want to emphasize the important points. Uh, often we end our proofs with a, uh, a symbol. Books do this. Or you can sometimes use the letters QED. Books also do that as well. Okay? Okay. Very good. So uh, we have the rationals. They have an order. They have an arithmetic. Uh, they solve, they're good enough to solve